Did you know the library is full of dirt? Join us this summer as we get the dirt. Discovering interesting reading trails. There have been trails about fireflies, flutes, dog diggers, and more. Today's Get the Dirt is another episode about pets. So far we got the dirt on pets from the fish family, the mammal family, and the reptile family. Today's pets are highly underrated when choosing a pet, but are a great asset in your fish tank or if you don't have a lot of time to care for a pet. They don't officially have tails, but do leave trails and are used in old wives' tails. They have one foot and the largest of its kind can be longer than a foot. They have been found on land and they breathe using lungs or in the water and breathe using gills. They are used in the idioms slow as a and at a pace. Do you have a guess what today's pet might be? Well, let's get the dirt by reading Franklin Helps Out. Do you remember reading other books about Franklin? Yes, we read Franklin Wants a Pet and Franklin and the Contest. Franklin is a great series of books for children. Brenda Clark drew colorful, friendly characters, and Paulette Bourgois wrote engaging stories that help children know how to deal with everyday situations. Listen to the characters in Fr Franklin Helps Out to see if you can figure out which character might fit the clues. Low maintenance, highly underrated, an asset to a fish tank, no tails but wives' tails, used in idioms, slow as a, and at a pace. Let's read the book, Franklin Helps Out. Franklin could count by twos. Franklin could tie his shoes. He liked to help Mr. Owl in the classroom. He always lent a hand to friends and neighbors. But one day, Franklin was a little too helpful. Franklin's class was going on a nature hike. Mr. Owl asked everyone to bring back something for school for the school nature display. He reminded the students to leave living things in the woods where they belong. Then he pointed out where Franklin and his friends might find some interesting nature objects. Franklin could hardly wait to collect something special. Let's go this way, he said to Snail. But Snail didn't hear because he was too busy looking at fungus. Then without asking, Franklin scooped up Snail. I'll give you a ride, said Franklin. Snail was so startled he hadn't finished exploring yet. Minutes later, Franklin spotted some milkweed. He put Snow down and blew the pots. The seeds floated into the breeze. That looks like fun, thought Snow. He found it. He found a whole pot of seeds for himself. But when he hopped and puffed, nothing budged. So Snow searched until he found a pot with one small seed. He was about to blow on it when Franklin picked him up. We're on our way, said Franklin. I'll give you a hand, Snow. Snow sighed. He had wanted to blow on seed, too. There were lots of wonderful things to collect in the woods. Beaver stuffed her backpack with pine cones. How many things do you have? She asked Snow. None so far, answered Snow. I'm waiting to find something really special. After lunch, Bear discovered a wasp's nest. Wasps sting if you bother them, warned Beaver. But Bear insisted the nest was empty. Then he heard a buzzing sound. Oh no, he cried. A cloud of angry wasps, wasps flew out. Run, shouted Fox. Franklin and his fans ran. The Franklin and his friends ran screaming down the path. That was close, panted Beaver. That's the fastest I've ever run, said Goose. Me too, said Franklin. How about you, Snail? But Snail wasn't there to answer. Franklin suddenly remembered he'd left Snail behind. Maybe the wasps stung Snail, cried Franklin. I should have taken them with me. Franklin and his friends raced back to the nest. There was no sign of wasps and no sign of Snail. Snail, called Franklin. Snail, where are you? Snail had no idea his friends were worried. He was busy exploring a network of termite tunnels. Snail was puzzled when he heard Franklin's frantic calls. Here I am, said Snail, as he called out of the lot. Franklin rushed toward him. Are you all right? Of course. 
course, giggled Snail. Everyone re was relieved to see, all see that Snail was sick. Snail didn't understand all the fuss. I'm fine, he said. But I do need, but I need to collect something. I'll help you, said Franklin, scooping to pick up his little friend. I can do it by myself, said Snail. But Franklin insisted. Snail's head drooped, and he let out a big sigh. Franklin made sure to cook. He helped Snail all afternoon. When Franklin found the seeds, he put them into Snail's bag. When he found beautiful pebbles, he kept one for himself and gave the other to Snail. He even picked a leaf for Snail, although Snail could have done it himself. Franklin could collected so many things that Snap could barely move. When it was almost time to go back to the school, Snail still hadn't collected anything he wanted. Franklin offered to find something else. Snail was annoyed. I want to find my own special things, he said firmly. Then he set off alone. Franklin was hurt and puzzled. I just wanted to help, he told his friends. Snail is so slow, and he doesn't move very fast. But he's good at doing things for himself, said Beaver, in his own way. Rabbit pointed to the cliff. Snail was climbing straight up beside. Told you, said Beaver. Wow, said Franklin. Looks like Snail doesn't always need my help. Soon, Snail slid down the cliff and showed his friends a sparkling quartz crystal. Everyone ooed and awed. That's the best find yet, said Franklin. Snail smiled proudly. Just then, Mr. Owl's whistle blew. Better hurry up. Back, Franklin started to pick up Snap, but then he stopped. Can you give you a ride, Snap? He asked. Sure, said Snap cheerfully. I like getting help when I really need it. Franklin ran so fast that some of his pebbles and leaves fell out of his bag. Don't worry, said Snap. You can have one of my crystals. Thanks, said Franklin. Snap smiled. I'm really glad I could help. So which animal in this book fits our clues? A beaver would not be low maintenance. A turtle could be underrated, but turtles have tails. A bear would not be an asset to fit a fish tank. Owls are used in old wives' tales, but they have tails. Hmm. Slow as a... Yes! Slow as a snail, or at snail's pace. You may have heard of the idiom snail mail, which refer to the pace at which our letters go through the United States Postal Service, compared to how fast you can send an email. Do you want to get the dirt about more idioms, such as today's slow as a snail, or, is it, or at snail's paste, and snail mail? You can find great books such as the series, Sayings and Phrases, book in the 428 section of your library. There are, these are my aquarium snails. They are aquatic snails, which means they live all their lives in the water. So since my snails live all their lives in the water, does that mean my snails are fish? Aquatic snails do have gills like fish for breathing underwater. Aquatic snails do live all their lives underwater like fish. Ah, yes, they have no fins to swim underwater, so they are not fish. To what family does a snail belong? Let's get the dirt. My snails belong in the snail family. They are a gastropod, meaning stomach foot. It means its foot is where one would think a stomach sh would be. They are related to other mollusks because they have soft bodies and some sort of hard shell. To get the dirt on snails, we're going to read two books on snails. These books are nonfiction in the 594 section of the library. You can find these and other books on snails. Books like Snaily Snaily Snails. can be found in a special section of the library because these books are nonfiction and beginner reader books. Be sure to get the dirt from your library and where they are kept in your library. While I read these two books, let's see what interesting facts you can find about snails. Snaily, snaily, snails. Snail. Snaily. Snails. Snails have soft bodies. They are like oysters and clams. A snail's body is soft and wet and slimy. A snail's shell keeps its body safe. A snail can hide in its shell. 
Some shells are tall. Some shells are flat. Most snail shells are smooth, but some are hairy. Some snails live in gardens. A snail creeps across the garden. It leaves a trail of slime. The slime helps it hang onto plants. The snails eat plants. Many people do not like snails in their gardens. A snail uses its tentacles to feel around. How does a snail see? A garden snail has eyes on the tips of its long tentacles. Snails also live in ponds. Pond snails are dark brown. Some pond snails have gills, like fish. Gills help snails breathe under the water. Other pond snails have a kind of lung. They float to the top of the water to breathe. A pond snail has two tentacles. It has eyes at the base of its tentacles. Garden snails do not like the sun. Garden snails like the rain. Garden snails like the night. Dry weather is not good for a garden snail, so it goes into its shell and it closes up the opening. A garden snail lays its eggs deep in the dirt. One snail can lay up to 15, 85 eggs. As soon as the baby snails hatch, they look for food. The babies can eat their own eggshells or other eggs. The largest snail in the world can grow up to 18 inches long. This, snails live in the, this snail lives in the ocean. It can even eat starfish. The smallest snail is very tiny. Ten of these snails could fit in the eye of a needle at the same time. Have you ever seen a sewing needle? Well, this is the eye. The eye is the tiny little hole that you put the thread through on the needle. And there's the snail. Look how tiny it is. Watch out, little snails. Beetles, snakes, toads, turtles, chickens, ducks, and geese all like to, like to eat all kinds of snails. You can catch snails and put them in a clear jar. Be sure that the jar is open or has some small holes. Put some leaves in the jar. Watch the snails move slowly. Munch, crunch, snaily, snaily, snail. What did you find interesting? Let's read a... Let's read. Let's look at snails. Something is hiding in this shop. Can you guess what it is? Surprise! This is a snail. Snails have soft, slimy bodies. On their backs are hard shells. Many snails have round spiral shells. Some snails have shells that are long and pointy. This sea snail has a spiky shell. Sea snails live in the salty ocean. Where else do snails live? Freshwater snail snails live in ponds, rivers, and streams. Freshwater is not salty. Land snails live in forests, trees, and gardens. Some live on mountains or in deserts. This land snail is leaving behind a slimy trail. The trail is made of mucus. The mucus trail helps the snail move. It's like a slippery road. The snail slides over it easily. This body part looks like a belly, but it is actually the foot of a snail. In the front of the foot is its head. Most land snails have four tentacles on their heads. Can you find the snail's four tentacles? Look closely at the ends of the two long tentacles. Do you see two black dots? Those are the snail's eyes. A snail can only see dark and light. It uses its two shorter tentacles to feel where it's going. 
A snail's mouth is near the front of its head. Most land snails eat plants, but some sna snails eat animals. Snails look for food in damp, dark places. They try to stay out of dry, sunny places. Do you know why? A snail will die if its body gets too dry. It can go inside its shell to stay cool and moist. Some land snails hibernate in the cold winter months. The snails go into a deep sleep. Mucus seals their shells shut. Are these snails hibernating? No, they are hiding from a predator. Predator are animals that hunt and eat other animals. Many predators like to eat snails. This snail is laying eggs in a hole in the ground. Snails hide their eggs from predators. Inside the eggs are baby snails. What happens to the eggs? The eggs hatch. Out come tiny snails. Baby snails are hungry. First they eat their eggshells. Then they look for tasty plants. A young snail eats and eats. It grows bigger and bigger. Its shell grows too. This slimy snail is it. All grown up. What did you find interesting in this book? This big snail right here I named Bungly Bear. And I didn't really name the smaller snails, but they are all apple snails. Apple snails named Bungly Bear after the three Bungly Bears in the book Prince Caspian by C.S. Lewis. Yes. I mentioned that my Gurami was also named from a character in the Chronicles of Narnia series. Jewel was named after the unicorn in the book, The Last Battle. Good job remembering. Snails are really quite fascinating to watch. You just go along at snail's pace, going right over everything in their pass. path. Sometimes my snails even crawl over each other. It's crazy. Snails are beneficial to my aquarium because they help keep the tank clean by eating algae and waste from the sides and bottom of the tank. And my catfish doesn't get to its food. And if my catfish doesn't get to its food fast enough, there, my snails are eager to help him eat it. My snails also are beneficial to my sister's turtle and to my large goldfish. How? They eat the tiny snail's shell and all. The snail shell gives my goldfish and the turtle calcium. The snail's soft bodies are full of great protein. Did you know some people eat the soft part of snails? The scaragot, land snail. If you look closely at a snail shell, you can see you will see that it has a special pattern. Do you think what can you think what that pattern is? Look at the cover of the book, The Biggest House in the World, by Leo Lani. Do you see a special pattern of the snail shell? Do you recognize the shape as I trace it with my finger? Yes, that's a spiral. Would you like to get the dirt about this spiral of a snail's shell? Did you know a snail shell does continue to grow all of its life? It's true. A snail's first shell, uh, the one it had when it first hatched from its egg, is called a Pronococh. The pronococh forms the center of the spiral of a snail shell. There is an activity I find fun and relaxing that I want to show you. It will help you draw the perfect spiral. This spiral is like the other that is formed by a nautilus as it grows. Nautilus is a sea animal, and its shell is similar to a snail. Just like plants, animals have to fill in instructions that determine how they grow. The photograph on the next page shows the inside of an empty nautilus shell. Do you see the spiral? Let's draw the 
the Fibonacci pattern on our special paper. You can use graph paper. I'm using larger squares that it printed so you can see the pattern bigger. So what you do, I'm going to choose, use different colors so you can see it easily. So, I'm going to start with one square. What I do is I'm going to make a box around it so you can see that it's going to be green. So this is square number one. All right? Now, I'm going to get another color. Right next to it, you draw another square. This square is going to be square number two. Next, I'm going to get a red one. Now, this is where the tricky part comes up. On top of these, I'm going to draw a box that consists of four different squares. So it's going to be bigger than all the other, other ones that I've made so far. Next, see this one, it is two up and two across. Two by two. The next I'm going to make is three by three. You go up three and then across three. And then the next one is what's three. And two. Three and two is five. Which means the next one is going to be five by five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Five by five. Then what's 5 plus 4? 5 plus 3, I mean, sorry. 5 plus 3 is 8. So the next color would be 8 by 8. To make the perfect spiral, I'm going to get a black marker so you can see it easily. I'm going to start with this corner. I'm going to go down, cross, up, and then through this one through this one, and through that one. You see, that then makes a spiral that looks like the inside of a snail's shell. The third way we see Fibonacci numbers in nature is in a different kind of spot. This time, it is on an animal. The spiral starts at the beginning of a Fibonacci sequence and grows the same way Fibonacci numbers grow. Look at the drawing on the next page. The spiral starts in the corner of the red square, curves through the orange square, the yellow square, the green square, the blue square, and the purple square. 
and I did sort of the same thing right here. It's an easy and fun way to draw spirals. For more books on the fascinating world of Fibonacci, get the dirt in the 512 section of the library. To find more about the man Fibonacci, get the dirt in the 921 section of the library. Can't wait on can't wait to get started making your own Fibonacci pattern. Just remember one by one, one by one, two by two, three by three, five by five. 8 by 8. Here's a sheet that also shows it. 1 and 1. 2 by 2. The purple ones are the ones that you would draw in the box. See, there's a purple one. and a pur So there's two ones. And there's a 2 by 2, 3 by 3, 5 by 5, 8 by 8. If you want to get even bigger, bigger you would go 13 by 13. And then 21 by 21, 34 by 34, 55 by 55, 89 by 89, 144 by 144, and so on and so on and so on. It doesn't stop. Nature is full of spirals. Pine cones. Sunflowers, pineapples, and more. Each week, to introduce our pet section, we've been reading a book about someone with a dilemma in choosing a pet. We've read Henry and Mudge and Annie's pet, pet, Franklin, what's it, pet, and what pet should I get? Books like these help us decide what kind of pet might be right for us. Or maybe not right for us right now. We'll start a book called A Perfect Pet for Peyton by Rick Osborne and Gary Chaplin. Each week we'll read a little bit and get the dirt on what might be the perfect pet for Peyton by listening for clues and looking for clues in the illustrations, which were drawn by Willie Wilson Williams Jr. Get out of bed, sleepyhead. Today's our day. It was a very special day, indeed. The twins, Peyton and Penny, knew what they wanted to do and had dropped a lot of hints. I hope our hints worked, Penny said excitedly. Peyton stretched. Me too. But Mom and Dad have been acting like they haven't heard us at all. Surprises are so hard to wait for. Peyton sniffed the air. Wow, Mom's pancakes. The twins dashed downstairs. Happy birthday, Peyton and Penny. Penny prayed a birthday breakfast prayer and dropped another hint, thanking God for their birthday adventure. Dad chuckled. Guess where we're going today? Peyton felt like he burst. Mr. Chaplin's perfect pet palatorium. Penny added, please, please, please. Mom smiled and simply said, yes. The kids exploded with excitement. They're going to the most amazing pet store on the planet. It was like a zoo, museum, and a theme park, and a birthday party place all in one place. Shortly afterward, Peyton held the door of the family truck open for his mom and sister. Penny climbed in right next to her dad. Dad, did you hear all of our hints? Oh, we heard all your hints, Dad teased. And you're having a party there, the twins cheered again, and getting perfect pet pals. This time, Peyton's cheer wasn't as so loud. Mr. Champlin matched each customer with a perfect pet. Peyton knew that Penny really wanted a perfect pet pal to spend time with, but he didn't think pet matching would work for him. He was just really excited about their party. Mom grinned. There's also a surprise you didn't think about. Your friend's parents are letting them get pets as well. Well, cool, Penny said. Peyton opened the colossal doors. He had always wanted a super pet, like a circus animal 
or a horse that could do tra tricks and help the thing. He didn't want just a regular pet, even if every man in the house was getting one. You must be Peyton and Penny, Mr. Champlin said. I hear you're getting perfect pet pals today. I'm not sure, Peyton answered. Just then, super cute monkey surprised the twins with bags of jelly beans. Penny squealed. Your birthday guests are inside exploring, said Mr. Champlin. Peyton and Penny were already moving. The twins scanned the map. Penny really wanted to visit the pet exhibit and the sea area with its aquarium tunnels. Peyton was curious about all the birds. He also didn't want to miss the reptile area. It had life-size models of dark dinosaurs that moved. Where do you want to start, sis? It's ginormous. Let's hang out together and take turns choosing, Penny answered. As they set off to explore, they heard an incredible symphony of animal sounds that seemed to be calling them on. The bird area was first. It was a pretty paradise filled with beautiful bird songs, bright colors, and flapping wings. Penny smiled ear to ear as her good friend Jayla came skipping towards her. She loved spending time with Jayla. Happy birthday, Jayla said. You chose the perfect party place. You two are awesome. Aww, awesome, said an African gray parrot. I love that bird, Jayla gushed, and they all laughed. Jayla sniffed and sneezed as they entered the barnyard area. Wow, they even make the area smell white, she exclaimed. Where's the padding zoo? Penny wondered. Oof! I hope it. A helpful dog brushed past Peyton and pushed again to open. The sign said, Petting zoo. Good boy, Jayla praised. Penny spotted Sophia, another one of her friends. She was cuddling a large brown and white rabbit. Huggy birthday! Saying Sophia, she gave out one-armed hugs, then showed her friends which animals were the softest, furriest, and the best to pet. As they headed to the aquarium, Peyton noticed that Penny and Sophia were being followed. They giggled gleefully when he handed them their furry animal followers to pet. At the center of this spectacular sea area, dolphins did tricks and helpful things for the aquarium staff. A dolphin would be the perfect pet for me, Peyton thought. He felt a little disappointed that it couldn't take home the kind of animal he really liked. Peyton headed into the reptile area. Dinosaurs would cheer him up. He was happy to see his friend Kevin there. Happy birth, happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday? It's an odd way to say happy birthday, I'd say. Wait until you see your present. And did you see that cool monkey? He gave me jelly beans. The girls arrived just as the boys finished their secret handshake. Mr. Champlin followed them in. I see you found each other. The party starts in ten minutes. Thanks, said Jayla. That's nice of you to tell us. Then she screamed as a robot dinosaur nuzzled her shoulder. Kids were still laughing when they sat down. It wasn't that funny, Jayla said. Penny sat next to her mom until the pizza arrived. We call this our cheesy double cheeseburger pizza, Mr. Champlin announced. This one's our crazy creeper crawler crawler's creation. He laughed. Just pick the spiders off if you don't want them. Sophia squirmed, even though the bugs were real. Peyton stood up and started handing out pieces. Jayla loved it. You two have the best parties. What came next made everyone gasp. Do you know what, ne what came next? Do you have some ideas to what Peyton's perfect pet might be? Tune in to Get the Dirt next Tuesday to find out more clues to what happens next. Peyton's perfect pet and another special pet guest from the Mammal Family. Thanks for joining us for to Get the Dirt. Today's Get the Dirt. Be sure to continue digging deeper at your local library.